just sending Mark my local news piece from Instagram. New Orleans. I mean, uh, Las Vegas. Welcome to Discretion Advice. I'm John Hill here in Los Angeles with my amazing bestie, Cameron. <laughs> Mark McNamara. Hi. I'm here too. <laughs> I, I love that blouse you're wearing. That is a very lovely, it's giving, um, oh, I don't want to be canceled. It's giving like Operation Desert Storm. Word. Blouse. <laughs> Send in the troops. Yeah, so it's giving my khaki room. blouse. Oh, who wears khaki? Jenna Lyons, a.k.a. Mm. me. That's who I was for Halloween. Your Halloween costume was so good. <laughs> It was a last minute because Raphael Alencar, who, let's plug the live show. He's going to be all right at a live show uh, this Friday, November 10th at the Red Eye. Doors open at 7 o'clock. Show promptly at 8. It is free as a thank you to all of our listeners. So be there. But Raphael had a, a costume party and I didn't have a costume. So at the last minute, I was like, well, I actually have all these clothes that Jenna wore to the finale. So I just went as her. It was so good. And did you have a lesbian lover with you? I always do. My dog, Chumba, Janet. <laughs> Chumbawamba. How is your dog no, with the leg? Okay. Did, did this happen between our episodes? Chumba, You mentioned that he was having how. an issue and that it wasn't growing properly or something. He was in a lot of pain. And then you posted like a cast or something. I know. They were actually two separate instances. He was having growing pains. There's like a technical oh. term for that. But he was outside on the terrace all by himself going to the potty and... All of a sudden, I hear something hit the wall, and I run outside, and there's just blood what? everywhere. He sliced his leg open on I don't know what, because the blood trail starts in the middle of the terrace. So, like, what? there's nothing sharp anywhere near him. I don't know, a pigeon swooped down and Yeah, I was going to say, off. it's like that show, The Staircase, could be owl theory. Like, the owl swooped down and scratched him. It could have, because we have, like, retraced and CS died and, like taken every little piece apart and have no idea but he cut his leg like bad like almost off like i could see the bone i took him and i ran to the vet which is luckily only a block away and now he has a screw in his legs to like tie the tendons back together and he has like a full leg cast this poor baby he is i moved my voodoo doll of him out of the frame oh thank god don't don't hurt my little chumba (laughs) so he's he's doing so good but it's he he is but it's so sad to see this little boy with so much energy just have to stay still he can't be on his leg but he's a great listener he's such a well-behaved little boy i just wish i knew how this happened so that it could never happen again but we can't seem i don't know how how you have information on this dog attack call d-i-s-c-a-d-p It's what I get from, like, making fun of the dog nappers for Lady Gaga. Like, this is my karma. Karma. It has come back to me. It's probably Taylor Swift. Like, I don't know. I'm the problem. It's me. Karma. It's all happening. Okay, yeah. Tagline, tagline. Yes, word salad. Come through. (laughs) Yes, word salad. Um, I had an experience with high society this week. (laughs) which was like very different for me. Like I actual went to high a, society. Yes. I went to a, an event at the Guggenheim, like a board dinner. Uh, one of my friends is a part of the board there. And so he's like, will you be my date? And I'm like, I direct porn. Like, what am I going to talk about with these people? I was so nervous. Like what, what are people, I don't know how to contribute to conversations then. You look classy so the, though. You can pass. I did. I did dress up in a nice outfit with a little monocle. But the first person asked me what I did, and I was like, I'm a scientist. <laughs> yeah, you got to lie at that <laughs> like, point. Like, what type of science? And I was like, nuclear physicist, because like, no one's going to ask about that. And then they're like talking about, oh, have you seen the the new collection of like Gabriel Orozco or like some famous painter? And I'm like, girl, have you know. seen Home Goods this season? Like, it just was <laughs> Have you not... seen Train My Hole? <laughs> yeah. But it was actually a really fun time. Like, I was, I thought everyone was going to be snooty, faluti, but... Honey, I was, I did not smoke before. I was like, there's no way I'm going to get high for high society. I know that's like mashing, but no, I need to be 100% sober as a scientist. Yeah. Okay. And what did you say your science of choice was? A nuclear physicist. And what does that do? I have no idea. No one else does either. So no one's going to follow up with a question on that. Guggenheim has always sounded like a sex act. The word Guggenheim. Break my Guggenheim in? Or no, just like give me the old Guggenheim. (laughs) Speaking of Guggenheim, your new uh, feature in Crotch Magazine just came out. 
Thank you. Literally Where can we see out. this? Because what I have seen is not internet friendly or not like social friendly. You can put it on the Twitters or the X or no, that's only a, fans. No, that is totally Instagram friendly. You can see your entire dick from start to finish. No, there is a cloth over it. You can see the VPL. Okay, there's a, a cloth over my eye right now. Like no, there's you not. can you see, can see it. VPL. <laughs> you can't see the actual skin of it. You can just see the outline. And baby, um, I can see your scabs. Are, your scabs are softening. I can no, see everything. No, it's they have been Instagram approved. Although I probably won't post that one. Uh, but they're just for pre-sale right now. I think they come out next week. You can get your own hardcover issue, and you can buy a calendar of mine for a hundred dollars. Oh wow, he is mm. flat out porn star now. When we started, this is our fiftieth episode, by the way. When we started oh this little this little project, uh, he was just so buttoned up. Don't don't talk about nudity. Don't don't do anything. Here he is, fifty episodes later. Here's my dick, y'all. Here's the quest bar on display. Eat it up. It's more I'm like so a quest cookie you. at this point, honey. It is a quest train, and I'm hopping on. Oh, hey, it's a quest. <laughs> yeah. Um, milkshake. That's what it's become. And the boys are at the yard knocking. I can't wait to see you for our gig. And I met Melissa in person at BravoCon. I, she was standing right next to me. I went to one thing, and that was Jeff Lewis's welcome to BravoCon party just because I know him and I do his show. But I, I didn't attend any BravoCon official things except for, um, I guess that was kind of one. But it was his party. And I was standing next to this beautiful woman. I was like, oh, my God, Melissa, you're going to do our podcast next weekend. And she was like, you guys are so hot. I'm really excited. She did say we. she's been like – She's kind of bending the rules. They were like, Bravo PR was like, you can't do that. You can't go and talk about the show on a podcast. But she was like, trusting us that we'll kind of like do it in a cool way. We won't be like. We're there to have fun. I don't give a shit about Teresa. I like Teresa. Don't get me wrong. I don't give a shit about Louis. I don't want to know. I'm not interested in putting her on the spot. Yeah. And we can say. We don't need to. We can always do that trick of like, you can say stuff. And then she can either drink her champagne or, you know do whatever she doesn't want to answer i think joe will be there too i want to see joe i want to see joe's tits okay i just i ordered so penis squirt guns for you uh, they, there's a there's a on tits play game that we've on been like play that's right been texting about that we may do but i've ordered penis squirt guns yeah squirt me. and hoping that joe joe gorgo will squirt you with like almond milk on your tits i want it so come see us on friday but oh, i wanted to go back to the jeff lewis of it all what did you feel about what Crystal from Beverly Hills said about him? He said that like episode one of the Beverly Housewives premiere was Crystal was the best episode because Crystal didn't speak at all. And then Crystal in an interview said that he texted her apologizing because he's a cocksucker and he's a bitchy guy. Like I, to me, that was and I words don't really affect me, but I, that came like with hate and I don't, I don't I wasn't really super cool with that. I know people were offended by that. I was on his show this morning and he brought that up and he said, okay. he, and he read it all and he was like, he didn't take offense to it because the way she wrote, she wrote back to him in a text, like she wasn't saying you're a gross gay person who gives fellatio. She was like, you're a cocksucker. You're an asshole. And she was giving him shit. It sounds like they were both talking shit and it was like, not, it wasn't that deep or personal. And so I think it's okay. I don't think she was coming out. Like, I think she's not a homophobic person at all. I think she's actually really great. So I think they cleared the air on that. Um, But he did say, like, I'm seeing you all. I'm seeing that you're saying, you know, cocksucker is insensitive. He's like, but I am a cocksucker. And I think he his brand is to be an asshole, to be a shit talker. And she was just kind of, I think, using that. Like, I know people who are old, like me, remember cocksucker as just being like, hey, you're an asshole. Not like you're someone who puts insertion into her okay if if that's what she just meant as an asshole i do yeah, think she meant because you're a dick people are coming at him for like oh you can't comment on women but like we're supposed to we're supposed to comment on housewives we're supposed to comment on like we're supposed to comment on john's show you're supposed to comment on my porn like we're we put ourselves out there to be commented on you could comment on it but then coming back and saying well you're a fucking faggot you're a bitchy queen i don't know well if she meant it as an asshole then all forgiven and and like bitchy guy is different than bitchy queen and faggot is different than cocksucker i think he's a cocksucker and he's a bitchy guy is actually like in a weird way like acceptable (laughs) 
But like if someone were to say faggot and bitchy queen, I think that would be specifically about being gay. But I can kind of see a world where you're a bitchy cocksucker is like, well, <laughs> colloquially speaking, I don't know. You yell I at me I'm, for like saying about Vicky one time she was well, a but bitch you or said a cunt. She, no, you called her a cunt. And I think that's a she direct. A oh, my God. I do not support that. But, no, but again, like I meant it as like her response saying no, thank you was being cunty. Right. But to a woman, that is such an intense dig to us. It's okay. like, oh, I call you a cunt all the time, but it's like we love each other. But like to a woman in her late 60s being called a cunt for saying a pleasant no, thank you is absolutely inappropriate. I promise you. You don't have to agree with me, but I promise you that is like the world out there is how mm -hmm. that would be interpreted interpreted okay well when she brought her pe her her orange out last night and handed it to angie for like a here bring me back my response is no thank you fine i think that's appropriate <laughs> <laughs> that, but no thank you, cunt. you dumb cunt is not i think there is a little i didn't bit say it line. as a dumb cunt i don't think she's a cunt she we I have know. to bow down to her she's given us so I much know, over the years I know, her I response know. was cunty <laughs> i know well, i, I know that you think it was but uh -huh. But you know what? No one wins. No, thank you is a perfectly lovely response. Okay. But what I want to say, yes, thank you, is Andy had the best line of the entire night at the Bravos when he said, Thank you, Bravo, for paying for everyone's hotel room so that Juan Dixon doesn't have to. Whoever wrote that for him, give them all the money that Bravo made for BravoCon because that was the funniest thing that has been said on Bravo in years. It's so good. The police is coming for me. He talked about that on our show yesterday, or today, actually, too. He was saying that he cut that. He thought it was too much. And then he it's kind of... Brilliant. He was like, Robin, I had this thing. I cut it. And she was like, what was it? And he told her. And she was like, no, you got to put that in. You, it was so funny, funny and unexpected yeah. from him. Like, come on. Juan Dixon doesn't show up for his wife for the reunions. We think he's going to show up at a hotel room for some random girl. No, he fucked this woman. Mm -hmm. I think they should do a Bravo roast every year like Comedy Central does of people. I think they should do a full hour of just mean jokes. Oh let everyone God, laugh at yes. each other. Because these people, I was saying to him, are famous for not having a sense of humor about themselves. That is why they're entertaining because they take themselves way too seriously. So it's very refreshing to be able to take a deep breath and everyone can laugh at themselves just for one night and then go back to being obsessed with yourselves. That's what New York is missing. The reboot is they're missing an unhinged character. They're all too smart. We need like a Brandy, a Tamron, a Nini, an Adriana, a Teresa. We need someone unhinged on the New York cast because they're Once, all too smart for their own good. Now they're seeing themselves on TV. What's going to happen is like the next season, they will they will start to crack. I think. Um. Did you hear I Love New York's read for Amarosa on the House of I've Villains? I've been saying she it in my car to myself <laughs> yes. as I pass people on the street. I'm like, you cum-guzzling, cock-sucking Republican cunt. Cock-sucking, cum-guzzling, Republican cunt. And I sleep better knowing you're not in the not White in House. in the White House. <laughs> That's the proper use of cock-sucker, Crystal. Yeah. You're a cock-sucking, cum-guzzling, Republican cunt. The way she speaks to people... In, a, in such a pleasant tone is why they're so savage. I fucking love her. Um, I would by the way, much let Gemma know that she is a fat cunt. <laughs> South Africa. South yes. Africa. South Africa. It's now out. <laughs> Global entry. South Africa. Do, what, what do you mean, Cameron? Tomorrow? T -t -tomorrow? Tomorrow. Wednesday. To Wednesday is the premiere of Global Entry South Africa. So don't forget to go to NakedSword.com and watch that. Sorry, I had to get that plug in before we wrap it up. On today's episode, we're going to talk about feuds. Porn stars, Smackdown, Squash That Beefcake. We're going to bring together people who have had feuds. This is our 50th episode. So we want to just like create as much peace as possible before the end of the season. So that's what we're doing today. Um, do we need to move on to hot topics, thought topics? Oh, God. Uh, Gosh, there's so much going on in the world. How do we even keep it together? Hold on. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, did I tell you I saw Lauren Hill and it was a disaster? Yeah, you did. I knew it would be. I'm sorry. But it's not her fault. It was the sound. Like, she was wearing a beautiful headpiece. But like they could not get the sound right. You could not hear what she was singing. And she stopped the show several times. And then when they brought out the Fugees, even Wyclef stopped the show and said, fix this woman's mic. And they never did. And we couldn't hear her. So hopefully on tour they have fixed that. But yikes. Damn. Did you see 
the video of uh, Mike Johnson, the new speaker of the house, talking about his and his son's porn accountability app, which yes. um, anytime you sign on to, you search for anything or you look at an image, it sends your accountability partner a screen. Can you imagine being a 17 or 18 year old kid and everything? By the way, I wanted to comment on the video like, do you think he doesn't have another phone, girl? Yeah, you think These he's kids looking are so up smart. nakedstore.com on that phone? No, Even he's using if another phone. If your parent were to say, like, listen, you should watch whatever you want. Go on the internet. Look at anything. That kid is still going to get a burner phone. They don't want you anywhere near their search history. A kid doesn't want you anywhere near it. That's how my mom found out when I was in high school. She looked at the internet search and whoopsie doopsie, dicks everywhere, but Mine holes, too, because the internet had just been invented. I didn't know how to work it yet. Ugh. It was parents, that and like the Rosie O'Donnell chat rooms I was in. Boom. Oh my God, you're lesbian AF. I know. She down found it. Boots. Both out. So uh, fuck you, Mike Johnson. And fuck you, know. Mike Johnson, also because fuck you support. You, Mike Johnson. Cocksucker. Cocksucker, because you also, <laughs> he also supports um, conversion therapy. And like, I can't handle it. It's so mean. It's so me. It's not just like we have different beliefs, but like to start a business, to support Exodus International, to be like we are actively trying to Fuck change you guys, you. is um that's what co like it's what makes people kill themselves. It's really really. Someone really thought terrible. I was part of that. They sent me a message on Instagram, leading back to a comment on thesword.com, which was Naked Swords uh, a press blog, and it was a comment saying that I. I'm part of conversion therapy. I'm pansexual. I want gay men to have sex with women and I want to convert them. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I made a whole movie about how gross that was called A Murdered Heart. No, I'm not. First off, I'm not pansexual. And secondly, I don't care who is, but What's I'm wrong not with trying to convert people. Well, it becomes a problem when you try to convert people and that's not what I'm part of. So I, I being pansexual isn't about back. converting anyone. People can like pansexual is whatever it is, but that like people are crazy. Yeah. No, nope. Cameron's giving us a finger. It was probably him who made that comment. What else? Yeah, we got? it was Cameron. Thank you for being a hater. Mm -hmm. uh, as right with his little Corvette shirt. Look at him. His little Daryl Arnard Jr. shirt on. <laughs> oh, okay, Dap. <laughs> he uh, he's such a child. <laughs> there's a big post that's going around about this guy who claims that once his dog saw him bottoming, he won't pay attention to him anymore. Listen to his commands. Um. You know, I've been doing my one-man show in which I talk about my dog being homophobic, so everyone steals me, steals what I create. Um, <laughs> but thanks anyway for trying. Have you ever walked in on anyone having sex? Oh, I do not. It's a very shocking thing to see someone, to see people in mid-sex. I mean, other than at work, I have never, I don't think I've ever walked in on like a regular, no, regular person I have having not. sex. Not my parents, not no my... Way. No one. I've never walked in on someone just having sex. Maybe at like a bar or like s maybe people were making. Uh, I can't think of sex. No, like it's not like, like you're full walking. on penetration. No, I no. don't think. It, uh, maybe I've blacked it out. But let's if ask. If I Mike walked Johnson. in on you bottoming, like <gasps> oh my God. I would. I'd have your eyes removed. I think you probably would. Yeah, I would be like, what's that movie where the person just like draws the picture over and over again of what happened? I worked at Six Flags. Girl interrupted. This girl, <laughs> this girl named Angela. I will wrap it up. Hold on, Cameron. This girl named Angela and I were working at the Christmas show at Six Flags. And she came to work one day shell-shocked. And she had a huge, like, 44-ounce Whataburger soda. And she was smoking a cigarette. She was like, y'all, I, I don't know how to tell y'all this. She had a gay roommate. She was like, I walked in on Todd. And if y'all have never seen two gay guys having sex, it looks so weird. And so <laughs> I just, I was like, what'd you do? And then she was like, I looked at them. They stopped. And I said, um, I'm going to go to Whataburger and I'll come back a little bit later. And then she went to Whataburger and then came to work. So anyways, the, for a long time, our joke was. If something was awkward, you say, I'm going to go to Whataburger. Anyway, and judging by laughing. Cameron's large exhale, okay. that was not worth it. But we will be you can right cut that. back with Bo Butler. And he has a beef, but we don't know who with and what it is yet. So we'll be right back trying to solve this problem. We are back.
Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I'm here with John Hill. And as you guys know, being a public figure, there is a lot of hate, disagreements, and being in porn is no different. So we are joined now by the man who is feuding, Bo Butler. Hi. Naked Sword Falcon exclusive Bo Butler, I should say. Hi. Thanks. Hi, Bo. So happy to be back. We miss you. Good. Let's keep in this happy mode. I think this makes you the most visited guest of all times of discretion advised with this appearance right cameron yeah don't don't say too much because we have trivia based on that later so okay don't don't, don't talk too much you may or may not be our most (laughs) guest let's 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 keep this let's keep it going fourth time fourth time fourth time all right so but this time comes with some motherfucking hate what uh what is going on who's your beef with first off well, my beef is with fellow uh, por- porn performer, Chris Damp. Um, we were really good friends. We hung out all the time. Um, yeah, we would get in some like pretty nasty Twitter beefs, but it was like all in good fun. And then what were the beefs uh, about on Twitter? Like about what type of thing would you get into a fight about? Well, he just like likes to go on Twitter and call me fake. And um, sometimes you are fake. Uh, he likes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> here he goes here he goes <laughs> uh, and yeah he'll just, he, he just likes to talk shit but it was always uh like a joke and it would like get us attention on our twitters um and then one day she just stopped replying to my texts we have a mutual client that uh <clears throat> likes custom foot videos i John invited Hill. her over <laughs> i invited her over for a foot video no response haven't heard from her since. Maybe he was just having like yeah. athlete's foot. Or maybe the, his <laughs> phone broke. <laughs> maybe. That's what we're here to find out, right? We're here to find that out. But okay, so once Are you, you see... open to a forgiveness moment? Yeah, I love that crazy bitch. Good. Okay. We do. This is to make peace. We don't want to be like messy and just have people fighting. This Our goal for this episode as our 50th episode is to just do something good. Give the Do the Oprah give back. But at what point, like... We get people come for us, anybody who as a public figure online a lot. What brings you to that point of engagement? When do you engage with someone coming after you? Oh, well, I try to avoid it at all costs. Um, I just don't think it's a good way to sell porn is to like be controversial. Um, So unless it's like I have my lists of like, things that i would feel like a bad person if i didn't speak out about so anything homophobic transphobic you know there's like okay this is my line in the sand or anything um like yeah just under the general homophobia yeah then i'll i'll be a i'll be a bitch on twitter but that's about it does it get better like the longer you've been in the entertainment industry like when your level's different like I mean, my level is like dirt and earthworms, so (laughs) I'm not like up there, but like you are more famous and you probably have it coming for you a lot. Does it get easier like the longer you've been in the entertainment industry? Um, you know, it's, it's honestly always been pretty easy. Um, I think, I think if you are somebody on the internet that spews negativity you attract negativity but if you stay really positive on the internet you'll get generally positive responses back i did have a a video go viral of me with a in the gym with a butt plug in but somehow it went to the wrong part of the world the part of the world that doesn't want to see that or appreciate that and it's like disgusting this is what men are these days in like all these different languages i'm like what in languages i went to the wrong part of the world and they're disgusted that's what happens to our youtube videos if you look under the con <laughs> comments under our discretion advised youtubes it's somehow going to like omaha like the straightest places on the world on the earth yes. and they're commenting on what the fuck are these people talking about yes mine went straight to dubai swear to God. oh no yeah and oh, like no. saudi arabia uh, someone Russia. okay I went to a, a dinner uh, at the museum and someone sitting next to me was from Saudi Arabia and she was trying to tell me how it's like the gayest place on earth and how like there's all these like secret gay parties with like royalty. And I'm like, 
you got to keep your mouth shut, girl, or else something. She's happen. got to keep her mouth shut because I know those parties, and you get paid ten grand to go. Oh. <laughs> Give them. That's my not. Number, that's girl. not start of beef with uh, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not here for that. I don't know if I can make that piece happen. All well, right. We're going to bring on Chris. I don't believe he knows anything about this. He knows he's coming here to settle some type of squash that beef moment, but he doesn't know with who or what's it about. So we're going to go put you in an isolation booth (laughs) and we're going to talk to Chris and then we'll bring you back on and we'll hopefully find some resolution to this. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. All right. We are now... (laughs) We are now joined by one of the nicest, kindest, the man who's always been all smiles and super professional, Chris Damned. All right, Chris, we worked together once on Content House, and also starring in that movie was one Mr. Bo Butler. This episode is, we are squashing any type of beef that someone may have, and by the look on your face, you don't know that (laughs) he might have certain feelings. We want this to be, uh, we're, we're here to make peacekeepers amongst you. You are the proud recipient of a beef with Bo. Do you know anything about it? No, I really don't care. So, I mean, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what are your general yes. thoughts and feelings about Bo, generally speaking? My thoughts and feelings? It's like LA. I love it, but I can't stand it at the same time. Okay. I agree with you. That's how yeah. I feel about it. Where are you Me from too. originally? I'm French. French. Wait, from Quebec France. or France? No, no, I'm real French. Real French. <laughs> what part were you, do? Were you born and raised there? Yeah, I was born in Marseille, and then I moved to Paris. Uh, I was 17, and then I moved to the U.S. like a few years later. Do you know who you remind me of? Like a French Zane. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you are Zany. I we don't. Look He's up, like but, okay. <laughs> You both have like this beautiful, like sculptured face and the tattoos and the hair. It all works together very nicely. So don't beef with me. I only have kind things to say. It's actually pronounced (laughs) boof. (laughs) Boof. All right. So do you want, should we bring Bo out here and like, let's see what this little bitch is whining about? Let's heal. We're we're trying to heal some things. So we're going to try to bring healing, bring people, bring people together. Okay. Now we are joined again by Bo Butler. Bo. Chris does not know what you're fighting about, why you're fighting. Do you want to like uh, explain what what we need to work out? Well, I was hoping he could tell me. I've been text texting him, trying to work with him. Um, oh, text me, yeah, sure, okay. Oh my God, the Americans are hilarious. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Bo, if you could just boil it down for Chris, just very succinctly, what is your issue slash buff? With Chris. <laughs> they, ne- <laughs> they never calls me or texts me. And I, I tried to do a foot video with him. No reply. Yeah, because I didn't, I had no interest. Why is there someone in the back? That's my boyfriend. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Chris is saying you didn't have any interest in the foot video. But Chris, do you think you could have responded and say, I don't have any interest instead of just not responding? So if I don't answer for the foot video, it's because I have no interest. So you never answer the text messages either. And I'm not the first one. I know you, that's what you said. You, you walk around with your vape and your phone in your hands and you don't answer because you're so busy. But you have your phone in your hands. So I don't know how now I'm the mean person because I didn't answer one text. It makes absolutely zero sense. How long have you guys known each other? Two and a half years. Long time. Okay. And it sounds like you both are hurt for each other not being there for personal things that are going on. Could we use this as a clean slate and try to be there more for each other professionally and personally? Because it sounds like you guys are friends outside of work, right? Yes. No. Well, Bo, so he just said maybe it's you that didn't respond first to something that he reached out to you about. So maybe both of you can, maybe does someone want to say, I don't know, just spitballing here. Like, and I'm sorry, or I'll try yes. to be more responsive or considerate of your feelings and not uh, ignore a text. I mean, it sounds like, you know, according to Chris, maybe you ignored a, a serious when he was reaching out to you uh, to stay friends, not just about a foot video, but to be friends. Yes. Yes. I am very sorry about that. Uh, it makes me really sad to hear that. 
Um, obviously, in my perception, I didn't see it like that. So I should work on that and try to figure out why I'm not noticing when my friends need me. Because you're selfish. And, I've told you this before. You are selfish. Uh, and I've said that to your face on our way back from this whole this trip that we took to get to do that gig um, in whatever state that was. And I told you at the airport, I'm so confused because you're not a single child, but you're ex extremely selfish. You only think about yourself. Always. It's you first. Me, 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 me. And Will you give him the space to work on this, Chris? Do you think there's something salvageable here that now that he's hearing this from you, he, you guys are willing to work on it? Well, there's no point. He lives across the world now. No, I don't. Only, are only you still half, living in L.A.? Yeah, I have my apartment in L.A. I have a year left on my lease. Are you upset that he left? He he left LA, Chris. Does that also something that's bothering you? <laughs> what would it bother me? Out there? <laughs> well, because you said he's not here anymore, like as if that's something bad. <laughs> I think what we're missing is an acknowledgement. Some, you know, like Bo, do you? I, I mean, you start to say that there's you that vape we heard about. Want to work on it? You know, <laughs> maybe just tell. Let's you know back up and just say. No, I, I definitely want to work on it. I don't, it makes me really sad to hear that. And I do know that we had had that conversation before. And I did in my mind think I was doing better, but obviously I wasn't. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, well, no, I don't want to hear that at all. I love him very much. That's why he's the first person I thought of when I heard about this. Yeah. To be fair, Chris, to, <clears throat> to support what Bo just said, when we talked offline about this and I was asking who he has some type of, he, where he needs resolution in his friendships, he said you because he wants to get better. He didn't want to go with like the people he has no hopes for or doesn't want to be his friends. He said, Chris is the one that I want to make better with because I really love him and I miss him as a friend. So he did say that offline. So I do know that he, he, it's not just because we're recording this that he wants some type of resolution. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? <laughs> I, I, I lost faith in everything, so I, I don't feel anything. I, I really don't care. Would you respond uh, if Bo had a heartfelt apology to you? Uh, I don't know. Would you be open <laughs> to that? He can apologize as much as he wants. It's just, it's just talk. I need actions. And over the last two years, there was no action. So there's no, I, I, I don't even know why this is a... A thing, but a cute look. You know, I don't know. It makes me laugh. I'm sorry. I don't. I really don't know what to answer that question. Do you? Will you put into action your words now, Bo? Will you? Yeah. Put some time in to get make this right. Absolutely. I'm back in LA uh, next week until the beginning of December. Perfect. You. Well, we I love think you, you need to say the words. I'm sorry. That's my tip. I'm sorry. There you go. But he needs the actions now because <laughs> Chris needs the motherfucking actions. Whew, this is hard because we love you both so much. Like my experience with both of you has been always very, very positive, And I know how great you both are. So let's work on putting action behind these words. And hopefully when you get back to L.A., keep us updated. Now we're invested in this and, and we want you guys to get to a good place. Okay. I don't know That's if we. Did. I don't know if that was a success, John. I don't know if we're we're good therapists. <laughs> oh my God, I clear my afternoon. I move my doctor's appointment for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Bo? You're right. Fuck him. <laughs> well, maybe what we can hope for is a first step in the healing process. Even if we didn't get full full um, balls deep resolution today, we got a little first step. We got our foot in the door. I'm sorry yeah. to ring up feet again. I feel good about it. I feel like it was good to good to see you. There you go. Oh, that's cute. That's a little gratitude. And look at you both look so cute. You can't be mad when you're looking that cute. I know. You look so <laughs> cute. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah, make sure you follow back. Chris and Bo on all the <laughs> socials. Let's make sure that they're not fighting. Let's make sure they're back together. And guess what? Our next beef has to do with me. I have a problem with Andre Donovan. So we're going to bring him on and I'm going to end him right here and now. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Discretion Advise. I am here with John Hill, and this next feud 
has to deal with me and Joan herself. Andre Donovan, Andre. we have not seen or talked to each other since the summertime. John, I'm going to let you broker peace here. Okay, so Andre, uh, as I understand it, today is, this is about there being a safe space to communicate, and I want to let you know you're being heard and respected. So this summer, a fuck him. Um, no, <laughs> this is so Mark's experience. Mark's is, Mark loves you first of all, but Mark's experience was um, he paid you ahead of time to appear with Meredith Marks on fire. Oh, see, Island. I wasn't going to talk about that. Oh, <laughs> <guess> sorry. <laughs> but then you bailed an hour before the show. That's all true. Those okay. are all true things. Okay. Now, did you do you feel like you? made that up to Mark appropriately? Um, no, not yet, but I'm wanting to. Okay, um, well, perfect. Now's your chance. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, hi, Mark. Uh, you look great. <laughs> um, it's good to see you. Um, I'll say my hello when I feel like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really, really sorry about that. You've been so wonderful to me over the years. You're honestly my most favorite director ever and i'm just saying that now to apologize i mean that um that was 100 percent my bad and i took advantage of your kindness and your professionalism and i regret it every day and i'll spend the rest of my life trying to get up to you if you will let me okay so here's the thing well what yes. was the other part mark it was a big, it was a big night for me. Like we had Meredith Marks there. We had, um, I had family who flew in. I had my reality TV show producer there. It was a big night and I was really excited. I chose you specifically because I knew you could bring it. And listen, Cardi B is not up there singing WAP without Megan the Sandwich. Like I needed my Megan, like Beyonce is not doing Bootylicious without Kelly. Tito's not singing his ABCs without Michael. Like I needed you there with me and you waited till the last minute till I couldn't replace you. And I was left with like a shitty show because I just feel like you didn't give a shit. So at that point, I texted you. I didn't say anything mean. I didn't step out of line. I just said, we're done working together professionally. And that's that. And I didn't, you know, I didn't go online or spread anything. I didn't say anything mean to you. I just let you know that I keep my house clean and I keep professional acting people around me. And I felt like that was like fucked up. It was. It was. And, um, and again, I take full responsibility for it. It wasn't that I didn't give a shit. I was... I overexerted myself and I didn't prioritize my responsibilities. Um, and so that was 100% my bad. It was fucked up. And I am very, very, very sorry. Very sorry. Okay. I, I, I believe that this is not a fake sorry. I do believe that you have a genuine regret for doing it that way. As long as you hear me and understand, like, I don't deal with that. You know, I like to keep things super professional. You have always been extremely professional with me. This is the first time we've ever had a situation like that. And I think I was maybe even more sensitive because I had so much writing on the night because there were so many people in the audience that I needed to impress that night. And then Megan didn't show up. So my WAP was dry like a macaroni in a box. <laughs> Andre, may I ask you another personal question? Of course. Girl, are you at the mall? I am at the mall. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. Mm. Okay. I got the time to accept. I thought Girl, we were doing it at do you work at the mall? Later time. <laughs> no, I'm just here visiting friends. No, okay. I had already come to meet friends. Okay. You seem so sweet, and I'm sorry that um, that unfortunate uh horrendously flaky incident happened but hopefully how old are you 37 okay well say, <laughs> maybe because you're really young <laughs> but so it's like a decade younger than we you can all, <laughs> we can all learn <laughs> yeah um that's okay but we all make mistakes i guess that's the real uh thing there and there's room for improvement um with all of us so oh your your rides here. <laughs> oh, they're they're, they're clean. <laughs> Andre, when are you back in New York? I'm um, down for the holidays, so like probably like early 2024, like January, February, sometime. Just taking some time off. You know. Live. Understand. All right. When you're back in New York, let's meet up. Let's have a conversation face to face. But I accept. I love you, and let's move forward. 
I love you too, Mark. And I will definitely hit you up when I'm back. Okay, beautiful. All right, it is our big 50th uh, anniversary episode or 50th episode. Yeah. So we'll Happy be right back you. going out. Oh, thank you so much. Now shut the fuck up. No, just kidding. <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> with the trivia to see who knows their discretion advice more, me or John. Thank you so much, Andre. And we'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to Discretion Advice. It, it is our big 50th episode. So it is time to break out some trivia. Cameron has put together seven questions each. And Cameron, you know what I'm going to do for the first time in 50 episodes? I'm going to open up the chat so you can keep motherfucking score this time. Because I don't want to hear, well, I don't know. I didn't keep score. I want to know. I want to know who's paying attention. I want to know who's paying attention. I can't sing, so I'm not going to write can't now. Be. <laughs> All right. John, I'm going to ask you first. Question number one. Can I do one thing one. really quick? Yeah. Trick off. Is that Gak? Oh, he's fingering himself. Watch over at Discad Pod on YouTube. John has his fingers in his hole. Let's listen to it. Oh, now Petey's involved. What is that? What is that? Sorry, I just had to do that. It's a oh. screen cleaner. Okay, my bad. Let's go. <laughs> Whew. Am I going first or you want to? What now? You know what? Now that you've cleaned out your hole, you 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 go first. You're you're the one ready for this. Number one. How many interviews have we conducted where the guest was in a restroom? The guest was in a restroom. Uh, Katie was. Mm-hmm. Century City Mall. I was. No, not even on the list. And I think Rusty was. So three. Rusty, correct. Four. And who, two who more did I miss? besides you. Dean Young and Paul Prince. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was all Rusty, Dean, and Paul were all in the same bathroom. Rusty Paul. No points for me. All right, John. How many episodes of the podcast have you done completely shirtless? Four. Oh, actually, wait, just two two it is just two provincetown and uh, well, zag harbor provincetown stoners and, and boners and the below dick episode yeah, so john yeah. gets the point he's in the lead fuck yes okay number two mark during our dirty jobs episode with johnny sibley and jj knight jj revealed he had implants in what part of his body easy well several but on that episode he just talked about his chest implants titties Titties, titties on parade. Titty, titty, titties. All right. It's a tie game, folks. But, John, you have another chance. Question number two. Name five reality TV franchises that feature past discretion advised guests. Potomac. New York. No, no. That only counts as one. Housewives. Oh, okay. Housewives. Um, Shaws of Sunset. Below Deck. What? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't on this list. You outsmarted uh, okay. Cameron. Um, Two more. Hold on. Hold on. Five. Just a four. Second. No, don't do that. Three, Bachelor. Two, Bachelorette, I mean. One. Time's up. I would have done <clears> it. <throat> you got four. Just uh, Housewives, Drag Race, American Idol, American Drag Next Race. Top Model, yeah. Milf Manor, Below Deck, The Bachelorette, Celebrity Big Brother, Milf and as Manor. you said, Shaws of Sunset. I got that. All right, so still one to one. We're not giving him the point. He fucked it up. Come guzzling, cocksucking, Republican cunt. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Crystal. Besides Bo Butler, which two porn stars have made the most appearances on the podcast with three episodes each? Three episodes each. Oh, yeah. Um, Diego. No, Diego's on two. Cole Connor. And now Andre Donovan have both been in three. Andre is three. And. Oh, uh, there's one more person, but you only need to name two to get the question. Work. Who was the other Liam. one? Liam. Liam Riley. Liam Riley. All right. Well, I, oh my God, I'm in the lead, John. I'm so sorry you're behind. But you have another chance to get another point. All right. Name, sorry, how many live shows have we had that were, that all were filmed? What? How many live shows that we ha have we had that were filmed? 
Okay. Three. And where were they? I would say Miss okay. Pineapple Contest. Yes, um, Heart Weo. Uh, season one finale. And forty two. Uh, Fire Island. Yes. All right. We're back in the tie gig. Two to two. Okay. All right. What are we on? Question number four. Yep. Name all of the below deck cast members we have had on this show. Okay. K. Chastain. Yes. Fraser Olander. Yep. Hannah Ferrer. Boom. Have we just had the three? No, there was four. It was a long time ago. It was early. First season. Oh, my God. Okay, give me a countdown. Five. Four. It doesn't help a countdown. Three. Two. Makes it worse. One. Josiah Carter. Oh, my God. And I love him so much. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, well, How did I up. fuck that up? Okay, hit me. Uh, I'm so sorry, Josiah. We need my to get Josiah asleep. back just for that mistake. All right. Still two to two. Name five RuPaul's Drag Race queens who have been on the show. Detox. Um, uh, uh, Willem. Um, uh, the one who was just here. Not five, four, three, No, don't two. do that. No, I adore. <laughs> no, adore was on American Idol. Or no, she was five, on four, three, two, one. <laughs> Bitch, you're fucking with me. Um, three, two, two more. Not who is the one I keep? She was just here, not Delta Work. The other, um, fuck me raw. Mm, five, four, three, two, Bianca. One. That's four. All right, Bianca Del Rio, Monet Exchange, Alaska, okay. Willem, Darian Lake, Teresa May, Darian, Kennedy Davenport, Latrice Royale, Mayhem Miller, Detox, and Adora Delano. I said Adora. You okay. did. You got. You got most. All right, we're still two to two. We can't. Both of us are not paying attention. <laughs> During our season two episode with Alaska Thunderfuck, she revealed that while in Spain, she took a shot off of which porn star's dick? Tim Kruger. Boom. You correct. Broke that. Three. One. Two. Three. All right, John. Get back in the game. We have three questions left. Number five. During our season two episode called Rapid Fire. What did Johnny Rapid reveal that he was breeding in his shop? Fish. 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 Kinky. Breed that fish. Disgusting. Okay. Oh, my God. I imagine that's what, like, people say on prom night. Breed that fish. Or we're not allowed to say fish in terms of coochie. Not anymore. During a September 22 episode, I revealed that I injured my jaw. How was it injured? Wait. Say that again? You injured your jaw. How was that injured? How was it injured? How was John's jaw injured? Wow. I probably thought you were sucking dick, and I still do. Rim job. Oh, you were eating ass? Someone was writing my face. Oh, my. Why don't I remember that? What season was that? I tend to... Uh, it was uh, last year. Yeah. yeah, you got that loose jaw. All right, what is the score now? Three to three. All right, John, we have two questions to go. What you got? Oh, is it my turn? Yeah, you. <laughs> so good at this. What is the exact premiere date of our very first episode? Uh, I want to say I it's know like the month and the year, but October. This is hard. Mm -hmm. I'll just pick my birthday, October 2022. I mean, 2022. 2021. October 23rd, 2021. You know, if you had gotten the month, I would have given it to you. But it was November, November 16th, yeah. 2021. All right. So it's still a tie game, right? I knew it was November. Is this our last question each? Okay. So this is it. Not John. including our live shows. Name all the locations outside your own home where you've recorded the podcast. This is hard. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, South Africa. Scotland. Uh, Sicily. Fire Island. Um, oh my God! How many? How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. I can only name four. Um, L.A. Doesn't count, but yes. That's, okay. Well, that was outside we'll my home when we we'll recorded it. it. <laughs> um, close to God. L.A. Very hot. Oh, Palm Springs. Okay. Vegas. Mm. Not on there, but sure. 
Oh, okay. Well, shit. I, I lost. I lost. Canary Islands, cunt. Oh, yes. The Canary Islands. Florida. The only one I Fire Island. Miami. I said Fire Island. Portugal. Miami. Portugal. Oh. Africa, Scotland, Sicily. Yeah, you got them. France. Yeah. Oh, and France. Damn. Damn. We've been around. All right, John. This is the last question. If you get this right, you win it all. Which Real Housewife city have we featured the most guest from? I want to say New York. <sighs> Am I wrong? And, oh, this is a two-part question. So you are correct, but the question continues. Can you name all of the housewives from New York that we've had on? Uh, Dorinda, Countess Luann, Kelly Benson. Yes, one more. Um, give me a hint. That means you didn't get it right, and we end this with a tie because it's Jill motherfucking Zarin. Oh, Oh my God. We also have had three from the OC. We've had uh, Margaret. We've had Tiffany from Dallas, Monique from Potomac, Brandy from Beverly Hills. All right, John. So that's it. We both were very close. We both ended with three, so we complete each other. We will take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Jason Caceres from Generation X. What is it fucking called? Boy Culture. Boy, Boy culture. culture, that's right. We just watched it. Boy Culture Generation Boy Pussy. Next. Jason Canceres, right after this. We'll be right back. Well, Welcome back. well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Discretion Advised. Hey, Mark, are you still here? I'm here. I'm here. Um, okay, joining us is Jason, drumroll, Caceres. Did I say it yeah, right? Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Where are you right now? I am in my living room in Los Angeles, California. Oh, my God. Neighbors. Oh, are we? Yeah, I'm usually in uh John? No, in my LA. actual neighbor is going to be like, stop knocking on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm literally through that next wall. I'm right next door to you. I'm going to single white. Should I hop over? Room. Don't. <laughs> yeah let's keep a you, boundary you won't please. want that <laughs> we my life is that. very boring so you you would get bored and find someone else to stock no it doesn't sound like it you are in boy culture generation x it's available now to rent on digital um tell us about that um it's a it's a very funny campy alan Braca movie um i'm sure you're familiar with alan yeah, he did course. all the eating out movies, which are iconic. Uh, it's a they don't like when I say the word reboot. It is a continuation of the a original, a requel of the original 2006 movie, um, Boy Culture by the same name. So it picks up 15 years after the movie left off. Um, so we see X. Can I say this after? Well, I mean, it starts that way. So they're having relationship problems. So he tries to get back into the world of hooking. Um, however, it's 15 years later. So things are very different. There is Grinder. There's OnlyFans. There's a bunch of stuff that someone his age is not familiar with, uh, which is where my character comes in to teach him the ways of modern prostitution. Now, were you method with your approach? Did you hire any escorts or go out on any calls? Um, <laughs> I did not. I, it, I created it all out of thin air. I'm not even gay. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm just going to throw Unfollow. out a bunch of lies during this interview so you won't know what's real. <laughs> wow, that's fascinating. Wait, how old is the character who doesn't know... Like, how old is the generation? It is the Probably X our age. Character. Yeah, I was going to say, because we are, like, notoriously little, considered ancient. A little older than you guys. He's, he's in his mid to late 40s. <sighs> oh, so, John's age. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I, I figured I'd throw in a little compliment in there. Throw in a little mm. compliment. <laughs> there is a line in the trailer for it that says, you, you deny yourself something because you don't deserve it. Do you think gay men... Like, does deny themselves love because we don't think we deserve it? Absolutely. I, I, I definitely think it's it's probably happening happening less now. Um, 
I want to say my generation, but I'm actually older than I look. Uh, the generation after me uh, probably is happening a, a little bit less given that we've come a long way. Uh, but there's, there's definitely a bit of um, self-torture that comes with being gay in our community. Um, so sometimes we, we do feel like we don't deserve love. So we self-sabotage. Wow. John, are you how denying many, yourself any how love often are you in, in therapy, Vegas? Jason? Yes, I am actually, Mark. Thank you. Um, I am denying myself. John, you deserve pleasure. love. Thank you so much. Maybe I by don't the think time you're I'm... denying yourself pleasure, but I do think you know. That's, that's why the camera's <laughs> pointed only up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't deny myself thirty chicken nuggets last night for dinner. Really? So, sorry, I, w- I was so hungry. Don't be. Now, Jason, you look I know like you can afford a few chicken nuggets. You're fine. Thank you. Exactly. Make it 60, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think the order's off the catering menu. Now, I know you're a straight man, Jason. Yes, very. But as a successful actor, do you feel that sexual orientation should dictate what roles you accept? Should gay people only play gay characters and straight only straight? Or do you feel like you're pigeonholed because of that? Um, so this is, this is a question I get asked a lot, actually, and I'm of two minds, because I understand both sides of it. So yes, of course, I would love to see more gay actors play more gay roles, have more opportunities. Um, because it's, it's authentic, but at the same time, we're also actors. So if we put people in these boxes and pigeonhole them and be like, okay, well, gay roles should only be played by gay actors, because it's more real, then are we saying I should never play a straight role? So I understand that, of course, gay people are a minority and more opportunities should be presented to them. Um, I think that should happen in the audition rooms, in the casting. Um, So we should be seeing gay people, absolutely, for the gay roles. However, should the best actor win? I think so, because that's what elevates a project is artistry. So if we only limit those roles to gay people, then I probably wouldn't have been able to do some of the stuff on my IMDb because they're straight characters, because I'm not straight. I mean, I am. Oh, there it is. The the truth is out. (laughs) So I don't know. I'm of two minds. I see both sides. So I haven't haven't actually picked a side, and I I haven't decided. I know it's a complicated issue. but everyone should be able to audition for all roles. I feel like that's a good diplomatic answer. Thank you. I'm running for Congress. <laughs> yeah, we need you. We need level hev- level headed straight people like you. I think Congress. I'm what America needs. You are. <laughs> yeah. Make America. <laughs> Gay whatever. Again. Straight yeah. again. God damn it. Gay. This is really Gay. hard to keep track that's, of. That's hard. But <laughs> I think what America does need is to follow you on Instagram. You are at Jason S. Caceres. Now, you are not shy of a thirst trap. And there's a lot of arm up content. What do you think it is about an exposed armpit that makes people's dick jump? (laughs) You know, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) The tattoo. That's what it is. That's it. What does it say? I'm gay. It's actually, it says I'm gay in Hebrew. I'm kidding. It's my brother's birthday in Roman numerals. Aww. Right? I'm oh, he's man. a Pisces. Um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> my brother's a Scorpio, but like, oh. now, now we know John can't read. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't read or tell time, and I can't do math. And don't, I don't get us started on Roman numerals. It's yeah. okay. You're very good looking, so and that's I don't all that know matters. the Zodiac. Well, I'm good looking for being my age. The Zodiac killer. <laughs> <laughs> in your I, early 30s this whole time actually the zodiac killer this is a brilliant way to hide what if i really was the zodiac killer yeah oh i'd believe it straight up psychopath yeah. tendencies yeah i say murder all scorpios i'm <sighs> double scorpio ah uh, well, so is my mom it. and my brother and my best friend and my ex all scorpios and they're all john hill why do we get a bad rap we're amazing what does Scorpio me. like? What is a typical like Scorpio? Yeah, Jason. What is a typical Scorpio? Since you want to annihilate all of us. <laughs> hey, I mean, I surround myself with them, so I'm obviously crazy and self-loathing. Um, from I'm not too familiar with the zodiac, but from my understanding, Scorpios are very um, strong-willed, 
hot tempered, um, slightly egocentric from what I understand. Um, but when paired with an Aries, very passionate. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what is the Aries birthday timeline? Oh, I know it. It's by My February, birthday's March twenty fourth. Yeah, yeah. So late, late March, early April. I had an okay. ex that was an Aries. I was into it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I liked it, but yeah, they're dead now. No, no. I think he's still alive. I have him chained up to a basement pipe. Okay, somewhere. we feed him Hot. often. Spe- okay, but uh, going into pipe. Your pole dancing skills <laughs> are insane. Where did you Thank learn you. how to do that? Um, I was going to two different studios. Uh, one called Pole, cleverly named in Culver Some City. One called Hole. Um, and one called Hole. <laughs> and the other one was Beehive Pole in uh, Glendale? Studio, Studio City, Glendale? And somewhere what drew above you to the pole as a straight man? Right. Well, as as a straight man, I wanted to ruin this man's career by continuing to say that he's straight (laughs) (laughs) or jumpstart it. Who knows? I mean, did you wake Uh, up and say that looks great? I want to try it. Or did you say we're one day like one day? Did you see yourself like buy a pole and you jumped on it? You're like, hey, that was fun. Let me try to get great at it. Or like, how did you know um, you'd be so proficient at pole at working such a hefty pole? Well, uh, the one comment I keep getting in my career is that I need to learn to be in, more in touch with my feminine side. Um, so I figured, what better way to do that than pole dancing? Yeah. Does it ever yeah. like, do you ever have that pole in just the right spot and it like, you get hard? <laughs> Which pole are we talking about now? The one you're squirk a lurk a trick on them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, which poll are we talking about? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> mm, I do have a poll at home. I will. That's say. all you need. That's all you need to say. <laughs> okay, I have one last question for you. As I was scrolling your Instagram, yes. What's in my hole? What is this? <laughs> and tell me about it. <laughs> that is a. Are you familiar with Michael Henry? Of course. So it is a three-part web series written, created, directed by Michael Henry. And it's actually um, a brand sponsorship video for a VPN network. Oh. I mean, Michael Henry can literally take any brand and, you know, make it a campy gay comedy. Um, so it's basically his way of advertising for, I think it's Shark VPN or something. And he just made a campy, campy web series about a guy stuck in a hole. Oh, my God. All right. Well, if you want to find out what is in everyone else's hole, head on over to NakedSword.com. But, Jason, uh, we already said your ads, your follows, and we can watch Boy Culture Generation X now everywhere available to rent on digital. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, Go hop back on that poll. Yeah. Uh, Stop being straight. Try to be gay. Just try it once. (laughs) I'm I'm worried I'll never go back. Well, Well, you won't. You won't. You won't. This is it. And we won't ever go back. Uh, Don't forget, we have our live show November 10th. That's this Friday at the Red Eye in New York City at 8 p.m. To a gift to all of you, we decided there is going to be no ticket sales. So it is going to be free. So get there early if you want a good spot to see Melissa Gorga, Raphael Alencar, me, and John Hill. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget, you can watch the full video on our YouTube and follow us on the socials at DiscatPod. That's D-I-S-C-A-D-P-O-D. One more left, John. The season finale this Friday in Wet Red Eye. See you then. Bye, guys. Bye.